Well, today's video is going to be on how to cure your sweet potatoes to get them things tasting mighty sweet. We'll be right back. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. You know, it's nothing more disappointing than to harvest up a bunch of sweet potatoes and take them in the house and throw a couple of them big old things in the oven and bake them and uh, pull them out and come to find out these things ain't sweet at all. They, they don't have any taste. That's very disappointing. Well, it's all about the curing. It's really not a very uh, complicated process. Um, what we're going to do this year is I got five tubs here, 20 gallon tubs, and we got anywhere from two to four slips in each tub. We're going to let these grow anywhere from 130 to maybe 160 days. And at the end of the summer, we'll harvest these tubs and we'll take these sweet potatoes over and uh, we'll cure them over in our chicken brooder. Now, the reason for that is, is uh, the high humidity level that's in there, and that, that time of the summer is good and hot in that little room. So we'll be back in the, um, at the end of the summer, and we'll show you how we do that, and there's really nothing to it. And once you do this, you'll be able to have some of the sweetest sweet potatoes you ever ate. So we'll be back in a few months, and we'll do that together. See you then. Well, welcome back, friends. Our Beauregard potatoes are doing pretty good in the containers. They've been growing for about, right out about six weeks now. So uh, I just wanted to show you, you know, that the, the slips did take root. They're doing fine. There's some vigorous vine growth right now. So uh, the warmer season is beginning now. We're starting to go into the 90s every day now. So um, we're looking at the days ahead of get some real good heat on these because they just love the heat. And uh, as soon as we get these on out to the end of the summer where I can uh, get these harvested in the early fall, then we'll uh, go through the process of how to cure these to make sure they're good and sweet. So we'll be back probably in a, let's give it a couple of more months and we'll come back and do another update and see where we're at. See you soon.
You want one? <laughs> you want you one? washed it for you. Yeah. Oh, it's such a cute thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the... Um, we got the uh, buckets cut loose from the vines and got the vines out and we were surprised we got a, a whole basket full of potatoes mm -hmm. that were just volunteering across the ground remember the vines that grow along the uh, along the ground they will gr drop roots down and they will produce new potatoes uh, you know every so often along the way of that vine and it sure did it mm -hmm. so we hadn't even started the uh, the five buckets yet and we already got one whole basket full so anyway we're about ready to get these uh, dumped out and we want to get them over in the brooder and get these things curing so we can talk about that a little bit so you about ready to go oh yeah let's roll woman okay <laughs>
Woo. Okay. There we go. We got just as many on the ground as we did in the buckets. <laughs> but anyway, here's our uh, harvest. Let's head on over to the uh, chicken brooder and let's uh, get these laid out on the table and, and get them curing so they'll sweeten up. Let's get started. Well, we got our uh, Beauregard sweet potatoes out here in the uh, chicken uh, chicken brooder. The chicken brooder is a good spot for us to do this because it's pretty small and compact and it gets the afternoon sun on it. And this room stays kind of warm. And as, uh, when we have baby chicks in here, it stays very humid because the, the little baby chickens, they put off a lot of humidity. But anyway, even without the, the babies in here, if we shut the doors, it gets pretty humid in here, especially for Florida, even at this time of the year. So these potatoes grew for seven months in the buckets. Um, we harvested it today. They went through some rough time, but Hurricane Ian came through <laughs> and dumped a whole lot of water on. So we had some that kind of went bad. Well, we had an awful lot of them that came out good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Lord blessed us. But for this procedure, what you want to do is find yourself a warm spot to take, take these uh, potatoes and put them out and spread them out on the table and try to get them where they're not touching each other. What you're looking for is a room that has high humidity. In Florida, I don't have to do anything that's already high, but if you live further north and you don't have, you have much drier air, a lot of folks will actually come out and put a humidifier in here or a big bucket of water they set in here and let that keep the humidity level up a little bit. But the main thing is high humidity, high heat. Now you saw us put this blanket, this uh, quilt, we, we cover our potatoes in the quilt 
and that kind of holds in that heat as they're um, curing over the next three weeks and you want to keep them nice and warm. If you've got them in an area that's enclosed like this is a small room, if you don't want it to be um, totally without any kind of ventilation. So I have this window cracked here and I have this one over here cracked so I can get a little bit of a breeze through here or just enough to get some air change in here. You just don't want the air to be stagnant and stale in here. So you have a little bit of ventilation. You have them covered with a blanket. You're in a high humidity area, nice high heat, and you want to keep them dark. So we'll turn off all the lights in here, of course, and uh, keep them in a dark environment. And uh, these should take anywhere from two to three weeks for them to sweeten. If you go out and harvest your sweet potatoes and you come in and start cooking them that day, you're gonna go, oh, these are terrible, I failed. No, they're just real starchy. Mm -hmm. And it takes three weeks for that starch to convert over to get a little bit sweeter into sugar. So let these things cure for at least two to three weeks and come back at that time and um, take some in the house and cook them, which is what we're gonna do, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll leave them out here for about two or three weeks and we'll come out and we'll uh, take this to the next step, which will be, I take them out of this hot box here and we put them in some containers and we just take them into the pantry or you can take them into your garage or in somewhere in your house, anywhere you wanna take them. Uh, there's, there's no longer a reason to try to keep them hot. Once they're cured, they're cured. So you can take them in, um, they will last several months and uh, at that time you can start eating them after three weeks. So we'll be back in about three weeks and we'll put these in, in, uh, into the long-term storage and then we'll take a couple of them out and cook them for lunch. Mm -hmm. And we'll be sure to cook Bing Bing some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't need it cooked, Daddy. I can eat it raw. <laughs> yeah, he eats it raw, but we, we kick them for him, make mm -hmm. it easier. So anyway, we'll be back in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been three weeks since we put our uh, Beauregards in here under the uh, under the blanket in the brooder, and they have uh, been keeping warm and curing, and they are now at the point where I can take them and transfer them out of this hot brooder and take them over to our, our pantry and uh, put them in long-term storage where it's much cooler. So the next step is to get them out of the hot brooder, get them into the pantry where it's um, cool and it's dark and there is some ventilation in there. With those three I should be able to let these um, sweet potatoes last several months and uh, definitely through our winter. So um, we'll uh, get these up today and let's go ahead and get them over there into the uh, long-term storage so we can start enjoying these things. Let's get busy. Well, there we go. We got all Nancy's Beauregard sweet potatoes spread out over here in the pantry. I, I like this little rack that she came home with. It, it holds a, quite a bit of potatoes up here and I can pick out the ones that are my favorites and those are the ones I go to first. <laughs> and here's a bunch of little ones up here. She, I try to separate the big ones from the little ones because she cooks them in different dip, um, recipes. But uh, this is it. Uh, the only thing out here that you need to know is that it's, it's cool, it's dry, it's ventilated, and it's dark. And these will last for many months. You can store them out flat like this, you, or you can put them in a cardboard box and stack them on top of each other. They ain't gonna hurt them. They'll be just fine like that. But uh, this is it. Next step is the kitchen. So I'll uh, let Nancy know that these are cured and ready to go. And, We'll do a little taste test in the, uh, in the house in there and see how these Beauregards cure it out. We'll be back at supper time. Mm -hmm. 
Well, them Beauregard sweet potatoes sure do smell good. I can't wait to give them the old taste test after curing for three weeks. I know, I know. You did a good job on all the sweet potatoes. It's and I think you're going to like this one, too. <laughs> I like them. Let's go to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for these and all other blessings. Bless this food to the nourishment of our body and our body and to your service. Please forgive us of our many sins. We humbly beg for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Bing Bing's praying, too. <laughs> he sure is every time. <laughs> Every time I pray, he starts praying. Yeah. You got any one in particular the, you want? The smallest one because I got rice. I don't want too much starch. Okay. Where where you want me to put it? Just put it right there. Right there. Okay. And this one looks like he got my name on it right there. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's gorgeous. What a beautiful tater. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so soft. Oh, yeah. You did a good job cooking these, and you cook them in a pressure cooker, didn't you? Yeah, I, I pressure cook it, but I don't let, I put water on the bottom, and I put a steamer. Yeah. So that way the water don't touch it, so it gets. Oh, I just it. love this melted butter on there. Mmm, it looks beautiful. Mmm. I just like it plain. That is a nice looking tater. Okay, let's see how that goes down. It's pretty hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's creamy. Mm. Delicious. Man, that is really they they cured out pretty good. Yeah. Three weeks. They'll keep getting sweeter mm -hmm. in, in, a, in you know another week or so too. It's delicious, sweetheart. You did a great job. Mm. Another great one you, you could eat that you enjoy. We could eat. That's a beautiful steak you made. Mm -hmm. uh, you know this is a good potato, but I can't even take a bite of that steak because I'm too busy <laughs> eating the potato. Mmm, it's delicious. Mmm. Yeah, this is wonderful. Just plain by itself, even. Ooh. They're very creamy. Mmm. Mmm. Wonderful. Bing Bing says he wants some potato with his um, with his steak. Yeah, I'm, I cut <laughs> him a little steak for him. So I put some potatoes in his bean food, mix it with a little bit of water. It should be good to go. He even likes sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are good for him. So, okay. All right, Bing Bing. Steak, sweet potato, and bean food. Here we go, little handsome. 